Our story on the City Newsroom uh, related to crime and violence or gun violence opens from Freetown, a suburb of Nima in Accra. This particular area was a very lively one on a Sunday evening, not what we are seeing today. There was a ceremony happening, someone was being wedded. Essentially a huge wedding ceremony was happening and in the excitement that ensued, people who would come here as part of the ceremony came with guns and they were told were firing sporadically in the air. Well, someone captured the video, the moment that these individuals came to the ceremony and were shooting into the air. Someone captured that video, shared it with the family. The family has since shared that video with the police. That would have been normal until a bullet caught a passerby and killed her in the process. That lady, Eunice Yeboah, was shot while she was crossing this particular bridge at this very spot on her way to the house, which is just a few blocks from this particular scene. People who have been here say to us that it's a normal thing for ceremonies like that to have people show up with guns and shoot in the air to celebrate. For some reason, we're told one of the guns jammed and in the event killed this lady, 27-year-old Eunice Yeboa, who has since uh, been pronounced dead by doctors and is currently in the morgue at the police hospital in Accra. On the city newsroom, we have come here to interact with family members, hear the story behind the killing of Eunice Yeboa and what justice they are going to be expecting to receive and from whom. I'm going to go to the house now and hear from family members. Well, so this is a somber and sad scene in the residence of uh, now late 27-year-old Eunice Yeboah, who was a victim of what you can describe as sporadic shooting. We were told it was a celebratory one, but what matters is that a young person has been killed as a result. This is her family home, and the family have been thrown into, this, into a state of despair into a state of mourning. Before I speak to the mother, let me invite the brother of Eunice, uh, if you could just join me, uh, Gostin. Gostin, what, what happened to your sister? Well, I was, okay, let's say Sundays, now evening, now let's say evening, around, around seven to eight. I was at Zongo when my younger sister called me and said, my sister is shot. So I didn't understand. My sister is shot. What happened? And she was like, they were having uh, this uh, outing, this wedding going on around the area. So she got shot by giving this kind of warning shoot and all that. So I quickly rushed. I asked her, where are they? And she said they are at polyclinic. So I quickly rushed there. But when I got there, what? Well, I don't see anything serious going on. My sister is just lying down. She's suffering. Nothing is happening. So I told my mom they should, they should take her to the rich or police hospital. And they were like, OK, they're going to take her there. So I left. I have to go to Nima police station to launch a complaint. Where was she shot? Which part of her body was shot? She was shot this part. Mm -hmm. A left leg, so it damaged her intestine. It's because that was what the doctor told me. So that was the only part she was shot. Was she shot at that place? No, no, no. One shot. It's only one shot. Okay. You were there when um, Eunice was shot. Yeah. What did you see? Um, she was coming from mommy's place, and then I met her along the road, and then there is a gunshot at where the ceremony is being going on. And she said, oh, brother, I'm afraid of the gunshot. So hold my hand and escort me at the other side for me to be able to go home. That's OK, fine. So let's go. So I hold a hand on our way. Um, I step to 
the other side of the bridge and then she started shouting my leg my leg my leg so i was thinking it's because of the noise of the gun when he, she heard before she was shouting so me going back and then take a look at her leg she was bleeding so that means the bullet has touched her so i carried her from there and then there is a taxi park there so i put her in a taxi and then we drove away to the hospital so you didn't see who shot her, did no, you? No, no. But you saw the people who were shooting? Yeah, I saw one guy, tall, dark, but at that moment, I can't stand and then complain, so I carried her when we moved. Were there many people shooting at that time? Yeah, yeah, but they are all in the crowd, so I didn't really recognize their faces or something. Uh, Godson, can, I, can, can yes. I continue with you? So what do you have in your bag, the one you're holding? Yeah, I have the bullet with me, the bullet that they used to kill my sister. Where did you find the bullet? Yeah, from the police station. I took it from the doctor. I want to hold it for evidence. I told the doctor I shouldn't give it to nobody. I want to hold it myself. Because things happen. Yeah. So the doctor, country, yeah. the doctor removed the bullet and gave it? Yeah, the doctor gave me the bullet. I asked him, I need the bullet. I have to keep it. And even in the parts that da got damaged. He removed it and put it inside a container. He wanted me to take it home, but I was like, no, they should keep it there. I'll bring the CID for him to see that part before they throw it away. That's what the doctor told me. I was like, okay, no problem. This is the bullet. What are you going to do with this bullet? I'm going to give it to the best, the best CID that is going to handle this case for me. I need justice, justice to prevail. We have nobody. Thank you, sir. Let me speak to your mother. Um, this is City Newsroom on City TV. We are in a home in Nima uh, where a lady was shot. We are told it was inadvertent um, during a celebration at a wedding ceremony and that uh, she was accidentally shot, we are told, or inadvertently shot. Uh, she has passed on, unfortunately. I don't know the kind. Oh, yeah, Colombia. Odama kuma so dama ni baku so. Si si ankrofo no ma pai me ni baku ho. No me cha baku ama me. Ese. Me no mu nyina ene utina fia. Ni papa ya re ene edi ni ko ekura se. Ti edi ni du ekura na se no. Ana ni papa no ni ni papa peni ni ni anti no mu. Si ha si si ano. Me di o papa ba. Oh, papa and Nink, right? Me not me didn't buy. They say, no, would you need to nash him in Sanko Sanko Say, me funny, say me back. Me so no more. Me so mind, Jano. Funny, it is everybody in the coming bow. You need to say, you're my cousin, me, you're my bow. But me did not come in, Manu. Maybe be a mayor, be a unity in the cow. The nipple was a funny dinner, me, say me fa. Me so mind, Jano, it's unity. Oh, me quite be brave, no mame. Oh, me quite be brave, no mame. Just say, a day na upe, a day pote na upe. Say anya mo. Say anya mo pe say me ya mo ya mame ni say ko ya mo be faswa. Ye be huni pano. Ena me sheshe. No no so. Mundi ni be fa mo kwa so no so. Nakuma be toni ya mo o be bi o be o be kono. Nakuma toni ya mo. Okay, India. Sorry, why? Condolences. So that's uh, the mother of uh, Eunice, uh, a, a young lady who was killed, and we are told it was an inadvertent uh, shooting that happened here at Nima, uh, around an area called Nasa Bridge, uh, on Sunday during a wedding ceremony. And uh, unfortunately, um, she has since passed. The narration has been given to us about what they went through trying to get medical help uh, for her. We've reached out to the Nima Divisional Police Command, but we are told we will not get a comment unless we go to the Regional Command. The Greater Caribbean Police Command um, has initiated or has started investigations into the murder case of one Madame Eunice Kesua Yeboa, which happened on the 22nd of August. The command has since um, arrested some persons, which includes the organizers, 
the bride and the groom to assist with investigations now we do know that um, there are some real culprits behind this and so we are making plans the astrainer's efforts to apprehend these people apart from that the um, command has since engaged opinion leaders to help assist with the arrest of these culprits or these suspects and then two we have um, also activated new informants within the area that the incident happened uh, the issue of um, shootings uh, of civilians has been a topical one in the recent past and here on the city news we've been exploring the story various angles to it let's listen to the um, Davis in Aquada, Nanaya Aquada, that is, uh, who um, is with the Bureau of Public Safety. He has some perspectives to share with us on this particular subject matter. We are looking in excess of more than 2.4 million arms in the hands of people that the state cannot trace or track. And I think that is pretty much very dangerous for uh, a fledging democracy with all its downsides, unemployment, you know, um, we, are, we are now warming into the whole concept of democracy and all. We cannot be joking with matters like this. Number two, um, between 2019 and 2020, we observed that the number of firearms, okay, firearms used in the commission of crime, had jumped from 46% to 51%. And if we compare just the first half of 2021 to the first half of 2020, we are looking at about 79% increase. So someone, something should tell you that the figures is just going up exponentially. And I think that we need to look at it as a people. One of the key areas that we believe should be looked at you know immediately if you want to do something about you know the increasing rate of heart proliferation in the country is to look at our borders unfortunately we will need massive investment you know around our borders in order to stop the inflow uh, not recently I've seen that they've started doing some work with you know border communities educating them and all but education alone doesn't doesn't do the trick we need some level of enforcement in order to, you know, seal off our borders from illegal weapons coming in. That is a major, major source of flow into the country. Let's go now to the police headquarters in Accra and speak to the director of public affairs at the police headquarters to help us understand how much the police know about the ownership of guns and how they are managing them. We have a big arms and ammunition directory at the CID headquarters that supervises all the arms and ammunition offices throughout the country. And they have every record, every bit of record regarding registered weapons in the country. But those that you earlier once spoke about proliferation of light arms, mm -hmm. you know, let us not forget that the war was suffered in the sub-region allow light weapons to fly here and there within the sub-region. Mm -hmm. But you know we have a light, um, a small weapons commission. commission. The police, the customs, exercise and preventive service, immigration service along the borders, they all join in the fight against this proliferation of weapons and they've carried out several exercises, some jointly, some solo ops that they've grabbed men and women into those dealings and most of them have faced you know the law courts but i can assure you that when you see our police out there on patrols at the snap checkpoints and so forth we all move into action making sure that we eliminate sort of this illicit so what accounts for the increase in robbery issues spousal attacks and these are all guns being used guns definitely yeah, have been but, but don't forget that the guns also we have locally manufactured guns mostly used by armed robbers okay so that one you don't have to register the police no, to procure no no, no that one it, 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 it is that those weapons are not registered those okay. uh, um pistols designed locally mm -hmm. 
and other dangerous designed equipment, you know, are not registered. And the police, the laws frowns upon that, and we arrest anybody seen manufacturing or even in possession of it. Yeah. And I can say that we have a lot when you come to the CID, we have a lot being kept, some being done with, some being destroyed on the orders of the court, okay. among others.